Hi, I'm Zoe Maya. Welcome back to Haven's Kitchen. Today I'll be making a potato frittata with romesco sauce. So I love this recipe because it's super versatile. You can serve it at breakfast, you can serve it at brunch, you can chop it up into squares and serve it as a canapé for a party. Um, it's traditionally a Spanish tapa, so we use the term frittata, but you can also call it a tortilla because it's filled with potatoes, eggs, juicy tomatoes, cheddar cheese. Another thing I love about this recipe is that a lot of times I have leftover veggies and leftover roasted potatoes after dinner. Um, so it's a great way to kind of fold in your leftovers and making sure that you're using every bit of your food. Um, and the romesco really does so much of the heavy lifting in terms of flavor building. Um, there's so many delicious ingredients in there, piquillo peppers, a little bit of chili. And so it really tastes like you put all of this time and effort into making this delicious recipe, but really it's gonna come together in about 15 to 20 minutes. If this recipe sounds like something you'd like to make, make sure to subscribe to have access to all of our future videos. All right, let's cook. So we're gonna be using a nonstick pan today. I love one with a nice heavy bottom because not only does it ensure even cooking, but we're throwing this in the oven. So we don't want something that's going to get way too hot, like an aluminum pan, and burn your eggs on the bottom before the center cooks through. Um, along with eggs, we're using super juicy tomatoes. Um, we're gonna sear those in the pan, get them a little blistered, get some of those natural juices out, which is gonna add another layer of flavor to the frittata. We have some potatoes that are boiled. You can use roasted leftover potatoes. You can use other veggies if you'd like. Um, we're gonna slice these in half a little later so that we can get a nice even distribution of potato throughout our frittata um, and then finish it with some cheddar cheese for a little salty bite as well as a beautiful golden brown topping. Another thing I love is that the roasted garlic in this goes so well with these flavors um, and I'm obsessed with Calabrian chilies. If you've ever had them, they're a salted fermented chili and that fermentation just adds another layer of flavor. So they're all mixed in here to the romesco. All you have to do is whisk it into the eggs. It's so easy and I guarantee you will not regret making this recipe. So the first thing we're gonna do is just make sure that we have our mise en place ready, which means everything in its place. We want our potatoes sliced, we want our tomatoes cut. That's gonna make sure that once we get started with our cooking, we have everything ready to go. So just gonna give a quick cut on these potatoes. Make sure to tuck your little fingers in when you're slicing. Um, if it's a bigger potato, maybe cut it in three. Um, so we're gonna do three little slices on the larger ones. Another thing I like to do is to make sure to think about the order in which I'm cutting things so I don't have to constantly be going back and washing my cutting board. Um, so if, let's say you're cutting apples and onions in one day, cut the apples first, that way they don't taste like onions. Same thing goes for right now. I'm gonna cut my potatoes so I don't have a super messy board. Then I'm gonna go into the juicy tomatoes and that way it's less time, less, clean up um, and I have everything ready to go and get started. So our tomatoes next. Um, a lot of people think you have to cut the top of tomatoes off. You don't, it's edible, it's delicious. Just slice it up and go. I like to cut down the very center though and kind of use that as a guide. And then if you wanted smaller bites, um, depending on who's eating, you can always quarter these, cut them into smaller pieces. I like a big juicy bite of tomato, so I'm gonna cut them in half. Um, and once we have our tomatoes sliced, we're gonna get our skillet started. We're gonna blister them again to bring out that natural flavor of those juicy tomatoes. This one is really big and juicy, so that's one that I would then cut into quarters. Even cutting is a really important part of cooking and kind of learning um, how to cut things evenly um, sized, not only for the enjoyment of the cooking and making sure that you have things in each bite, 
but also because they will cook evenly. You don't want one big juicy raw tomato and then little bits of ones that have kind of like dissolved into nothing. So make sure that you're cutting your things evenly so that they cook evenly um, and that's gonna set you up for success. Once you have your tomatoes sliced, you're ready to go with your ingredients. All you have to do is crack some eggs. My tip for you for cracking eggs, most folks like to crack them on the side of a bowl, but that pushes the eggshell right into your egg. It's gonna give you a much stronger likelihood, stronger chance of having eggshell in your egg. So I like to crack them on a flat surface. One nice crack and you're ready to go. Um, once you have all your eggs cracked, you'll season them and whisk them up so that when your tomatoes are blistered, you're ready to start cooking your frittata. So I like to start when I'm, when I'm beating like a lot of eggs at once, I'll usually start with just the tip of my uh, whisk and just go ahead and find each yolk and kind of crack it a little bit. That way, as I start whisking, the yolks aren't just like dancing all around the bowl, right? So crack them all, break them up, and then start on the outside and just work your way towards the middle. That's gonna make sure that you don't have like a tidal wave of scrambled egg trying to escape your bowl. Like they say, it's all in the wrist, right? You don't need your whole arm to whisk, just a little gentle wrist movement will take you far. Use the side of the bowl. And sometimes I even, you can see I'm kind of turning it. That just is making sure that I'm getting all of the eggs all whisked together. And you're just looking to create a homogenous, beautiful golden yellow. So once you don't see any more bits of really, really bright yolk or clear white, you're good to go. The last thing we're gonna add in is a few gentle pinches of salt. If you're wondering when they say, what is a pinch? Three fingers. So your thumb, your index finger, your middle finger, that is going to give you a nice pinch. So this is about what a pinch looks like. A scant, you know, like quarter of a teaspoon is good. Um, and remember that you can always add more salt, but it's really hard to fix a super salty dish. So salt to taste um, and taste as you cook. That way you're gonna get, obviously you can't taste this raw egg, but most of the time when you're seasoning to taste, sort of learn where that salt limit is for you um, and start with a few pinches. You can always season after, and especially with this frittata, I love a nice crunchy Malden salt on top. And so think about what you're gonna finish the dish with and make sure that you're not adding too much salt at the beginning. So we've added our salt, seasoned our eggs, um, and while the pan's preheating, I'm gonna go ahead and add about a quarter pouch of sauce. Um, and that's gonna really just fill up those eggs with flavor so that you get romesco in every bite. Um, and then we'll add some at the end as well. One thing I love about garnishing is that it tells people what is in the dish. And so when you see the plate and you see like, oh, there's romesco in there, and then you see that the eggs are kind of like an extra lovely, um, sort of like bright orange color, people are gonna see that color and be like, oh, I wonder if there's some romesco in there too. So it's a great way to let people know what they're eating before they eat it. Um, and it also just makes things really, really beautiful. So you can see that my eggs are kind of changing from that beautiful golden color to a luscious orange. It already looks super appetizing um, and it's going to look beautiful once it's baked. So our pan's preheated. We're gonna move over to the stove and get cooking. First thing I'm gonna do is grab my olive oil and some tomatoes and go ahead and get that olive oil a little bit hot before I add my tomatoes and start to blister them. And once we see what that blistering looks like, I'll tell you what exactly that means. So start with my olive oil, take my tomatoes over here. So we've got a little bit of oil heating here in the pan. I just wanna make sure that it's evenly coated um, so that every bite of tomato um, is kind of hitting the surface area of that pan. It starts a little smoke. That's exactly what I want. Now we're gonna get our sizzle on. And just give that pan a little shake. Make sure that your tomatoes are even and sizzling. Once we've got our tomatoes blistered, we're gonna pour our eggs right in. 
and we're just pushing those layers in a little bit at a time. And then every once in a while, if you're pushing, if you're seeing too many tomatoes in the middle, just, just push them around. All right. Once you get your eggs about halfway cooked through, because remember, we're going to pop this in the oven to finish. Mm -hmm. That's when we're going to start nestling in our potatoes. I like to do a mix of cut side up and cut side down. The cut side up is going to, you know, get nice and crispy under the broiler um, and just provide a little bit of extra texture and another layer of flavor. So I just take care to kind of nestle these potatoes in. Um, and, you know, it's that extra gentle touch of magic that you can add to your recipe rather than a dump and go. You're really being intentional about every little bite of potato in there, making it super beautiful. You could do a pattern, you could do a heart, you can do anything you want that makes you feel, feel good and happy because we like to cook happy here at Haven's Kitchen. So we're just going to let that continue cooking until we really start to see our eggs. Once in a while, I'll just check it with my spatula and you can kind of see that I'm bringing up the cooked eggs from the bottom and letting the rest of this raw egg down to the bottom of the pan. And that's where a good nonstick pan is really going to be your friend. Because even though we oiled this and gave it a little bit of lubrication, we want to make sure that after we pull this out of the oven, we're going to be able to slide it right out, slice it, and it's going to be going to be evenly cooked all throughout. You can also see that we're starting to puff up a little bit and get some volume. That's also what we're looking for um, because our eggs are going to souffle. All right, so I can see that I would say probably 65% of my egg is cooked. This is where we want to go ahead and sprinkle our cheese on to get it under the broiler and get that nice, beautiful golden topping. Um, and that'll also finish cooking our eggs. That's what you're looking for. That cheese melted, the eggs puffed up. Give that oven a close. All right, so here we have it. Our beautiful potato frittata. It's glistening, it's cheesy. It's just waiting to be sliced into. So if you enjoyed this recipe, make sure to like this video and subscribe to see all of our future videos. For the full recipe and a textable shopping list, click the link below. Thanks so much for watching, cook happy.